Chapter 4 The Fullness of Time Galatians 4 verses 1 to 2 Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. The heir, when Israel was in its infancy as a nation, it was considered as a child, and it was kept under the law of the father, the law of Moses. The time appointed of the father, this time appointed of the father is mentioned in verse 4 as the fullness of time. Until then Israel was under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father that the seed should come. Galatians 4 verse 3 Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. When we were children, this is speaking of Israel under the bondage of the law. The elements of the world, ordinances of the law. Galatians 4 verses 4 to 5 But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. The fullness of time was come, this was at a time appointed of the Father that God sent forth his Son. Made of a woman, speaks of the virgin birth of Christ. Made under the law, Jesus was the seed of the woman, Genesis 3 verse 15, that was promised, that came under the law. Jesus did not come under the dispensation of grace. Our dispensation did not start in a manger in Bethlehem. It started on the road to Damascus. Acts 9 To redeem them that were under the law, Israel was the ones under the law. That is why the gospel of the kingdom went only to the Jew. Christ came to redeem Israel first, while they were under the law, so he had to be born under the law. We don't learn about Jesus giving himself a ransom for all of the world until Paul first reveals it to us as part of the dispensation of grace. Then faith could be ushered in because the promised seed had come and he had perfectly fulfilled the requirements of the law. Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles, was the due time testifier, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 8, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. The adoption of sons, after Israel had her chance to be redeemed under the law then grace could be offered to the Gentiles by faith. Galatians 4 verses 6 to 7 And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Now the servant who had Israel as her future Lord in verse 1 has become equal with the Son, and they too now both become one new creature in the body of Christ. We do not become joint heirs with Israel and obtain her earthly promises, we become joint heirs in heavenly places with all Jews who also put their faith in Christ in this age. The believing Jew today has a different destiny, heaven, than did the believing Jew under the law. They had an earthly destiny in the previous dispensation, but after it, those who believe in Christ have a joint destiny with us in the heavenlies. Galatians 4 verses 8 to 9 Howbeit then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Verse 8 is speaking of us Gentiles, and more specifically, to the Gentile believers in Galatia that have been misled by the Judaizers in their midst. How could a Gentile, or a Jew, want to be under the law? I think the biggest problem was not that they wanted to be under the law, but rather that they were being misled by others thinking that they had to be under the law to be saved. Galatians 4 verses 10 to 12 Ye observe days, and months, and times, and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are, ye have not injured me at all. Ye observe days, and months, and times, and years, these Galatians were acting as if they were Jews and believing that they had to because of these false teachers sneaking in and perverting the pure gospel of grace. Deuteronomy 16 verse 13 Thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles seven days, after that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. Galatians 4 verses 13 to 15 Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. 
And my temptation which was in my flesh he despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessedness he spake of? For I bear ye record, that, if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes, and have given them to me. Infirmity of the flesh, Paul states that when he came to Galatia, he had an infirmity of the flesh which probably had to do with his eyes, verse 15, but they still received him as an angel of God. Things later changed, and they had fallen away from Paul's message which they had received so eagerly before and were now going after teachers of the law. Galatians 4 verses 16 to 18 Am I therefore become your enemy, because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yeah, they would exclude you, that ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. Paul was literally saying to them that they believed him while he was with them, and now they believe someone else because of their zeal. Zeal without the right knowledge rightly applied is very dangerous. Paul wanted their zeal for the truths he had delivered to these saints years ago to still be with them today, and not just while he was there to be their backbone. An allegory. Galatians 4 verses 19 to 20 My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you, I desire to be present with you now, and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you, Paul, and his team, no doubt led many of these people in Galatia to the Lord, and that would make them his children in the faith. Now Paul says that he is, like a woman traveling in birth, all over again for them until they get it right, and Christ is formed in them until they are spiritually mature. Galatians 4 verses 21 to 22 tell me, Ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written, that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. Genesis 16 verse 15 And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare, Ishmael. Genesis 21 verse 2 For Sarah conceived, and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Galatians 4 verse 23 But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. One by a bondmaid, Hagar, who was a servant, bondwoman, was not free, and she serves as an allegory that we will look at in a moment. The other by a free woman, Sarah on the other hand represent a free woman who was justified by a promise of righteousness by faith alone. Galatians 4 verses 24 to 26 which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. The one from Sinai, the one covenant from Mount Sinai is Agar, Hagar, she was Abraham's bondmaid which he picked up while out of the will of God when visiting Egypt instead of remaining in the promised land. Mount Sinai is of course the place where Moses would receive the law and give it to the people, but here we also see that the law is connected with Hagar who was Sarah's bondmaid. The law was a bondage for those under it, like Agar was a servant to Sarah. Agar's work was never done. This covenant always left its servants longing for rest, the kingdom, liberty, and deliverance. Israel was in bondage to the law until faith came. They were under tutors and governors until faith came. They were kept up under the law until faith came. The free woman, Sarah, is connected with Jerusalem, which is above, is free because of the promise which was believed on by Abraham by faith. Galatians 4 verse 27 For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Isaiah 54 verses 1 to 2 Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations, spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. 
Galatians 4 verses 28 to 29 Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. The children of promise, Isaac was the child of promise. He that was born after the flesh, Ishmael, who is type of bondage to the law, who persecutes the child of promise. Him that was born after the Spirit, as Isaac is a type of believer who is persecuted by those under bondage. He is free under grace. The two previous illustrations are now brought into this allegory, the flesh and the Spirit, and they are connected to these two women and these two covenants. As Ishmael persecuted Isaac, so also do the legalists, the children of the flesh, persecute those who are saved by grace through faith, and they attempt to bring us who are born after the Spirit into the bondage of the law. Galatians 4 verse 30 Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Genesis 21 verse 10 Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Cast out the bondwoman and her son. Paul's solution to the problem is to cast out the legalist in the Galatian churches who sought to enslave the free, because they are not heirs if they reject the free gift of God for their works. Galatians 4 verse 31 So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Children of the bondwoman, bondage to the law. The free, the free woman, here Paul includes the Galatians, himself, and all who are saved by grace through faith as members of the body of Christ, with the descendants of Isaac as the children of the free woman. He is telling the churches of Galatia and everywhere to cast out the law, because the law represents the bondage that Israel was under, and they are all free in grace. Chapter 5 Called Unto Liberty Galatians 5 verse 1 Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage, the is reference to being put under the law. Liberty has absolutely nothing to do with the license to sin. Anyone with such a notion is as deceived as the person who thinks they must add works to faith. Romans 8 verse 15 For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Galatians 5 verses 2 to 4 Behold, I Paul say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. If ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. If you are trusting in your circumcision, other works of the law, then you are not trusting in what Christ did for you. Christ is become of no effect unto you, to say I am justified by keeping the law is to say I don't need Christ's death on my behalf. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Fallen from grace, Paul is saying that the Galatians that were saved by grace through faith and who were now teaching that you need to be justified by the law, they have fallen from the teaching of grace. He is not saying they lost their salvation because grace means grace. If you could earn salvation or lose it, then it was never grace in the first place. Eternal security is a grace age doctrine, and it was not taught to Israel under the law, nor was it taught during the time when the four gospels were happening. It is not a doctrine for the tribulation period. It is specifically for us today. The vast majority of people who believe that a person can lose their salvation get their doctrinal support for that in the gospels or in books that concern Israel going through the tribulation, Hebrews through Revelation. The Pauline epistles is where we get church age doctrine from, not the gospels, not Acts, or Hebrews through Revelation, they are the Hebrew epistles written to the Hebrews, Acts is a transitional book. Churches can fall from teaching grace, and they can begin teaching the works of the law as necessary for salvation, but an individual in today's dispensation of grace can never lose their salvation. Galatians 5 verses 5 to 6 For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. 
the hope of righteousness, the righteous wait to be raptured, which is called the blessed hope. Galatians 5 verses 7 to 9 ye did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Paul here admonishes these Galatian believers to cast off this bondage which hindered their walk and begin to run again in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made them free. Galatians 5 verses 10 to 12 I have confidence in you through the Lord, that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. He that troubleth you shall bear his judgment. These seem like harsh words, but consider the consequences of misleading someone who then dies without Christ and spends an eternity in hell because of these deceivers. Paul had the innocent hearer's eternity in mind when he said this. I would that they were even cut off which trouble you. Paul said that it would be better off if the troublemaker were dead than for him to leave a trail of eternal death behind him wherever he goes with their heresy. Galatians 5 verse 13 4 Brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Called unto liberty, liberty frees you up to be a blessing to others instead of always being worried about whether you have done enough to please God. An occasion to the flesh, just because you are eternally secure, it does not give you the right to sin. Romans 6 verses 1 to 2 What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Galatians 5 verses 14 to 15 For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, Take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Leviticus 19 verse 18 Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, I am the Lord. A person trying to keep the law will tend to develop a self-righteous attitude, which can lead to other things that will eventually cause strife and division, which will lead to hatred and separation. These are not the intent of the law, but a person that is not led by the Spirit, who doesn't become humbled by the law, will naturally turn towards these tendencies. Galatians 5 verses 16 to 18 Thus I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Walk in the Spirit, the flesh will not lead you to do anything after the Spirit, and the opposite is also true. So, it is important that a believer ask themselves if what they are thinking of doing is a work of the flesh or of the Spirit, and then follow the Spirit. If we are acting in accordance with the flesh, then we need to cease and desist. Galatians 5 verses 19 to 21 Now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The works of the flesh, a saved person can do all of the things that a lost person can do when they are led by the flesh. These are the things that our flesh naturally wants to do, but when the spirit is present as it is in the believer, we have the power to have victory over the flesh. Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit, if we are actively showing love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, we cannot be simultaneously doing works of the flesh. Galatians 5 verses 24 to 25, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Crucified the flesh, 
we die to our flesh. Paul said he died daily. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 31 I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. Walk in the Spirit, all believers live in the Spirit, but all do not yield to its leading. Yielding to the Spirit that lives in us, and letting Christ live through us as we put into practice the fruits of the Spirit, that is walking. It takes a conscious effort to get up and walk. It is hard work walking in the Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 26 Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. We should exhibit these fruits of the Spirit in our lives, but we can also refuse to walk in the Spirit and thus fulfill the lust of the flesh. Chapter 6 A New Creature Galatians 6 verse 1 Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Ye which are spiritual, restore such an one, this is exactly what the Apostle Paul is doing here with the believers in Galatia that have been overtaken in a doctrinal fault. Paul, being their spiritual father, sought to restore these believers to doctrinal truth. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12 Wherefore let him that think he standeth take heed lest he fall. Galatians 6 verses 2 to 5 Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. The law of Christ, this is bearing one another's burdens. Christ bore the burden of our sins for us. Galatians 6 verses 6 to 7 Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth. The word communicate here literally means to pay the teacher. Do not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. When we do, we sow good seed back to the one who sowed it for us to grow by. We shall not only reap blessings here on earth, but treasure shall be laid up in heaven for us as well. The teacher should be provided for by the students that receive from him. Galatians 6 verse 8 For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Soweth to his flesh. This is when a believer buys lots of toys for fleshly fun which can corrupt them instead of storing up spiritual things. Soweth to the Spirit. This is when a believer finds out what God is doing in this dispensation and soweth towards that instead of buying more toys for his flesh which waxes old and corrupts. Buy dispensational books and give them to others instead. Galatians 6 verses 9 to 11 And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. Compare this with what the author of Hebrews says about the size of that letter, a much larger one. This is just another proof verse that tells you that Paul did not write the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 13 verse 22 And I beseech you, brethren, suffer the word of exhortation, for I have written a letter unto you in few words. Galatians 6 verse 12 As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. A fair shoe in the flesh, an outward physical act, like circumcision or baptism done for show, something to boast and glory about. Galatians 6 verse 13 For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. Glory in your flesh, glorying in outward acts that can be seen of men have no spiritual benefit. The Jews boasted of their circumcisions, while Christians today boast of their baptisms. Paul was not sent to baptize. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 17 For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Galatians 6 verse 14 But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ 
by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. The world is crucified unto me, the world was dead to Paul, and he was dead to the world. Under the law circumcision availed much, but under grace circumcision is unnecessary, and it can even be dangerous spiritually speaking if one places part of their faith in it for their salvation. And I unto the world, Paul let Christ live through him by giving up his own desires. Galatians 6 verse 15 For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. In Christ Jesus, you are placed into Christ the moment you believe the gospel. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. A new creature, the new creature is the one new man mentioned in chapter 1. He is the result of Christ's death on the cross which unites both Jews and Gentiles into one new body which has an heavenly destiny that will rule and reign from there after Satan has been cast down. Revelation 12 verses 8 to 9 And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Ephesians 2 verses 11 to 17 Wherefore remember, that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Galatians 6 verse 16 And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. The Israel of God, they were the Jews in the first century that were circumcised in their hearts, who believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew 16 verse 16 And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. They were the twelve apostles, and the believing remnant, aka the little flock of Luke 12 verse 32. There is no Israel of God today, there will be in the tribulation period, however. Galatians 6 verse 17 From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus, as the Galatian believers suffered trouble for following Christ, so much the more did Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles. 2 Corinthians 11 verses 23 to 27 Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Galatians 6 verse 18 Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Unto the Galatians written from Rome. The End